Dynasty the king, king. Every single primetime game we get prepared to enjoy. Every time there's going to be a high scoring affair, I promise you in the 2023 fantasy season, Dynasty the king, fantasy king, gods king. are going to take away a star player. We lose Trevor Lawrence. We don't know for how long. He goes down with an ankle injury. And Dylan, I, I wish I had like more shock. I wish I had more to spare. I'm just spent. It's been a season of this. I was actually just more focused on the excitement I have that Jake Browning is somehow keeping Jamar Chase's fantasy value afloat as well as the rest of the Bengals. Jake Browning looked really, really good. Gave me Case Keenum in Minnesota vibes. So I'm just going to focus on the positive because we don't know the status of Trevor Lawrence at this time. Yeah. I mean, it's another one, right, to dust. You're right. We don't know exactly what's happening with Trevor Lawrence, it but it just bad. seems like it looked bad. It just seems like, man, you you cannot catch a break. Like, you you built this team, right, in the offseason. You've got Trevor Lawrence or Deshaun Watson or an Anthony Richardson or Joe or Burrow. Christian Kirk. Like, well, no, I'm saying like at the beginning of the season when you're building your quarterback room in a super quarterback class, right? Yeah, You've yeah. got those guys and you're like, I'm, I got T-Law and, and Burrow as my starting quarterbacks. That's someone in the Yacht Club. I'm chilling, right? No worries mm-hmm. at all. I, you know what? On top of that, I've got Kirk Cousins as my third quarterback. I'm chilling. Bro, wiped out. <laughs> you want to talk about True. completely wiped out? Like that, that is someone in the Yacht Club. He, had, he literally had Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Kirk no. Cousins as his third option. <laughs> Not just someone, a, a former champion and, was in yes. the championship game last year, and him and Davis, the value king himself, looked poised <laughs> to meet up in the championship. He was actually the highest scorer on the week tonight, and all he's doing is scrambling, trying to get a trade done <laughs> right before the deadline at midnight. He actually did secure the services of Jake Browning for way too for cheap. pennies, pennies. It was so dumb. Pennies. We're going kind of below deck right here, but it's just oh. so relevant. The, oh the owner of Jake Browning's like, I got a fourth round pick. And we're like, you are an idiot. You might have Brock Purdy. I'm not, listen, I'm not saying Jake Browning yeah. uh, is Brock Purdy. I'm mm. not saying that. All I am saying is ESPN did a wonderful job on the broadcast pointing out that his completion percentage, which I believe was 83, 86. I'm going to do the math right now. It was 32 for 37. It, it was, was in the a, 80s. It was in the 80s. And it was an all time record for a backup quarterback in their first two starts. Let me, while you're looking that up. Or doing the math. Let me just tell you guys, if you have a quarterback and it's 86%, the, 86% completion. 86%. I don't care yeah. if it's the deadline. You squeeze. You squeeze. You don't give up a quarterback just for a fourth and say, hey, here, go continue to make your championship run. Like, squeeze. I, I just don't. I thought he was in a second that. at least. I was shocked. I was shocked. But a third, a good, third is better than a fourth. Two thirds. Yeah. You could have got anything, two thirds. Anything. Uh Good trade for that owner, but more importantly, what a surprising game. I really kind of, not that I ever dread a football game in primetime, other than for injuries, which we've, you know, we've had plenty of this season, but I I was like, okay, it's the Bengals without Joe Burrow. Uh, The Trevor Lawrence hadn't been a fantasy superstar this season. I kind of thought that the Jags were going to get ahead early and salt it away. Instead, we have a 34 to 31 overtime thriller. We have people who haven't found the end zone all year find it in Evan Ingram. He had a great Evan day. Evan Ingram, Parker Washington. <laughs> hey, I was going to get – whoa, okay, time out, time out. The amount of Parker Washington owners out there is going to be less <laughs> than Evan Ingram owners. Evan Ingram's been great all season. Uh, yeah. His best game for fantasy of the year, 9 for 82 and a touchdown. Um, th- there was so much to talk about. I mean, Joe Mixon had an incredible game. Jamar Chase yeah. looked dominant. But then you also, like you already mentioned with Parker Washington, you had some some rookies really show up. Parker Washington and then Chase Brown for the Bengals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Parker Washington, I think that was a result of Christian Kirk, right? Getting hurt, the testy twist at the True. beginning. I True. think that like that kind of set the tone for Parker Washington to step up, Calvin Ridley to step up. Evan actually Evan Ingram, Calvin Ridley aside, Evan Ingram and Parker Washington, if Christian Kirk plays. Who knows if either, either of those guys are relevant because it's been proven that not so. But Chase Brown was a nice kind of pleasant surprise, I think, coming out of the backfield because I we haven't seen anyone spell Joe Mixon and Joe Mixon still had right. an incredible night. But I, Chase Brown, man, he looked he looked nice. He looked real nice coming out of the backfield. Dude, showed burst. He went nine for sixty one on the ground, so six point eight a carry. Very different than what Joe Mixon brings to the table. And as you see, running back committees become more popular in the NFL. If you're a Chase Brown owner and you somehow hung on to him through all of his rookie season where he had done absolutely nothing. That was nice to see. But let's get to the stars, man. I and mean, that's why people are really here. Yeah. Jamar Chase, 
11 for 149 and one. I was in a group text uh, in a league. I have Jamar Chase. I have Jamar Chase in almost every single league I play in other than the Yacht Club. Like it bothers me that I don't have him there. I'm such a fan. I said, this is going to be the type of game where Jamar Chase has seven catches for 25 yards. Because as the game started, they're just throwing him screen pass, screen pass. I was like, "Uh uh-oh, this is going to be like, you know, 20 completions for Browning, 150 yards. And then all of a sudden, the 70-plus bomb he catches, beats one-on-one coverage. Jamar Chase, you can trust him for the fantasy playoffs, right? Not that it's going to be the same level of Joe Burrow, but you're no holds barred. You're ecstatic. I mean, it doesn't stuff. look like it's dropping off too much, right? I mean, he had one of his better games of the entire season, yeah. season, including with Joe Burrow. I mean, he had his games with Joe Burrow, right? But I think the thing about Jamar Chase is, and what he proved tonight is he's quarterback proof, right? There's no yeah. matter what, as long as you can give the quarterback, whoever it is, Jake Browning or – who was the other quarterback, Brandon Allen, or whoever it is that's back there, if you can give them time to just get the ball to Jamar Chase, he's going to make plays. So I would say, yes, you can trust Jamar Chase going into the playoffs regardless of who's playing quarterback. And Jake Browning showed that he can do more than enough tonight, especially a Jags defense that's not bad. Like, no, that's the it's, thing. it's like it's yeah, not a bad defense. Too... And Jake Browning made him look like – I don't think they, I think they were shell shocked. I I don't, I just don't think they prepared for him to have that much confidence and poise. Browning, once again, 32 for 37, 351 and one, and then 22 rushing yards and another score on the ground. So he, I will say, I will say, Browning, he better be given a nice thing to that offensive line and Joe Mixon because without Joe Mixon and Chase Brown, the running game in general was a huge support. It opened it all up for him and they were able to run efficiently, which opened it up downfield. Yeah. I mean, this Bengals offense. I'm still not in on T. Higgins. I don't think you well, can that was, really rely I, I on wanted him. To, I wanted to pause on that. He was three for 36. And so 350 you know, passing yards are thrown, and Chase Brown is more relevant for fantasy than T. Higgins. And, and <laughs> everyone is talking about how relevant T. Higgins is going to be when he hits free agency because both he yeah. and Tyler Boyd, which is whoa, the only whoa, thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do not slander T. Higgins now. I'm not going to slander T. Higgins. You're I, slandering I just, T. Higgins no, now. No, no, no. I want to bring up the play because it was so funny you, how any bad it was of Tyler Boyd. Dude. <laughs> The play, if you ha- didn't watch the game, go look up oh, Tyler shit. Boyd interception. They throw <laughs> Tyler Boyd a backwards pass to then set up like a trick play where he throws to Joe Mixon. He threw it dead straight, like <laughs> he at the line at of it. scrimmage. It was hilarious. It was, and that, and what's great is if I don't play fantasy football, I don't watch this Monday night game. I don't get to enjoy that. So that's what makes it great. But getting getting back to T Higgins and the, you know <laughs> away from the comedy that was that Tyler Boyd play. This season, you're not worried about it. It's a wash. You're not really competing with T. Higgins. But let's just speculate for a second. How can and where can it get better? You know, there's a lot of offenses that would be dying for the the services of a, a, a potential wide receiver one. The obvious ones to me are Kansas City. Is there any other place you can see T. Higgins going where he's going to be more fantasy relevant than he is with a, a very good offense in the Bengals? The Bills. I mean, any any other contender, I think he... He's... You think he... Go- with if Stefan Diggs is still there, you think T Higgins is getting, I maybe I, who do they have there? I mean, they have Kincaid now, but I mean, who said yeah. Stefan Diggs is going to be there? They've had so much drama around Stefan Diggs. I'm, I'm just saying hypothetically, you asked where I'm saying, you would have the bills, to, yeah, you, th- there's a lot that would have to happen, but I mean, the bills, I think he would be fine in. I um, think he's destined for Carolina. I got to be honest. And I, don't I think, think he's destined he's for be Houston. Good. Houston would also be a Ooh. perfect landing spot for him. CJ Stroud. Are you kidding me? Like, yes, if he's doing he's, it with Nico uh, Collins, I think T. Higgins yeah. is a much more talented wide receiver than Nico Collins. I, You have completely turned on Nico Collins. No, 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 no. That's not an anti, that's not an anti-Nico take. That's just saying it's the facts. Like, T. Higgins is a more gifted wide receiver. Nico Collins is still good. That's fair. Well, let's get to the biggest news of the night, which is the Trevor Lawrence injury. Uh, you know, I was on the phone with Mike actually when it happened, because like we've mentioned before, we kind of play in two leagues with Mike. And in one of them, it's a four-point touchdown league. And... He did something bold. Uh, He started the season with Trevor Lawrence and Tua. He has since traded both away to upgrade his picks, his wide receivers, and his running backs. And he is running with the likes of Sam Howell, Gardner Minshew, Jake Browning, (laughs) and I think one other like no-name like backup QB. And his whole thought is in four-point touchdown, quarterbacks are the new running back. Trevor Lawrence was having one of the best nights he's had Um, last week was his best week he may have had a better night tonight however he gets injured he gets rolled up it looks like a high ankle sprain Um, at the very least I don't know how long he'll be out I'm only speculating but is there merit to Mike's strategy especially in four-point touchdown is quarterback at this point 
the new running back. Not this, simply because of injury, but because of volatility. Yeah, this is a conversation we need to have. Um, I mean, you're looking at – I don't remember the total off the top of my head, but it's what, like eight or nine – Quarterbacks, Let me just starting Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, Kenny Pickett, Trevor Lawrence, uh, Kirk Joe Cousins. Burrow, Kirk Cousins. That's seven right there. Anthony Richardson. I, eight. Like so, like the list goes on, right? I mean, yeah, that is ridiculous. I mean, we've got Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito. Oh, right? Daniel Jones. There's nine. We Daniel did it. Jones. Well, <laughs> found it. Yeah. But I mean, you've got Danny DeVito starting. You've got Jake Browning starting. You've got the the roulette of quarterbacks in in new york starting of the jets uh, you know there's so many situations yeah. out there that you're just like holy smokes like i think the 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 priority of getting a quality backup quarterback even a young quarterback i think here's what i would do i don't know if this is what's going to happen in the nfl but i would this year's quarterback class coming in right it's stacked it's from what we know what we expect of who's to declare what? Why not go and get a young quarterback to at least sit behind your superstar? Like, even if you have to go get him in the second, late second, third round, like, but the why Eagles not did with do Jalen that? Hurts. I mean, it, everyone thought that it was really weird that they drafted Jalen Hurts when they had Carson Wentz on a long term deal. Uh, I think you've got to start thinking, thinking don't you think? Like, yeah. as an NFL franchise, you've got to start thinking long term wow. instead of just having these like these guys that you hope are good. Like Jake Browning, yeah. they got lucky with Jake Browning. No, I mean. You know, it's someone they developed. I, I don't know. I would simply say that the NFL is changing uh, in, in a lot of ways. And th there's this belief that the game is safer now. And like, we're taking all the violence out of it. And there's, th that's a separate conversation. But when I look at this many injuries, I'm, I, th these guys are just getting more athletic defenders and off, you know, uh, offensive people. I think they have to increase roster sizes because this many mm -hmm. star players going down. I thought last year was the worst year we ever had. Like last year yeah. was like the year of the backup quarterback. It's this year. It's it's happening more and more every year because quarterbacks are also being asked to be more mo mobile than ever before. And so I, I think that's uh, part of it for sure. So let me let me ask you this. When it comes to I mean, Mike referenced the philosophy of mm -hmm. not not quarterback by committee, but similar to like the running back by committee, like we've talked yeah. about, right? The philosophy of something that I've been pretty, pretty adamant about is like why why build around running backs? Yeah. Obviously in super flex quarters quarterbacks have a more significant value. But especially if it's six point touchdown, especially this six would point not work touchdown. Yes, club. this would not it, work. I've done the no, math. If, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, you exactly. But most people, a lot of people play in a four point touchdown mm -hmm. league. So how do we treat quarterbacks moving forward? Do, do you kind of maybe wait a little longer on quarterback you if to, you're in a startup? No. <clears throat> if you have. So let me ask you this. Actually, let me ask you this. If you're in the first round, are you more likely than to take a Jamar Chase, a Justin Jefferson? Oh, yeah. Um, or one of those guys earlier no, on. I think it's very similar. The best running back strategy in my mind has always been hero running back. You take a McCaffrey, you take you take a Saquon, a McCaffrey, a Nick Chubb. I know he got injured, but like, and then you take low level guys. You don't try to grab the second one in kind of those middle rounds because they're not that big of an upgrade from the guys you reached on. In, in leagues, I had success this year, specifically best ball. I went like Christian McCaffrey as my running back. I went, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Eckler, unfortunately, that didn't work out so great. But um, but then it was Raheem Mostert, Devon H. Like that was my most common stack to grab at the back. Antonio Gibson, Brian Robinson, those were guys I grabbed for cheap at the Bro. quarterback position going into this year. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, I don't want to ruin your flow. But listen, listen to the top ten quarterbacks that were drafted right earlier this season. This this is the top ten quarterbacks in, that were drafted in fantasy. In, in fantasy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Patrick Mahomes, even him, yep. were like. You're, He's you're the quarterback ten on the season right now. You're not yeah. stoked, right? You're not stoked. Quarterback Jalen 10. Hurts, Jalen Hurts, you're fine with. Makes sense. Josh Allen, you're fine with. Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's quarterback been twelve right. on the season. Oh, uh, Jordan wow. Love's been better. We'll talk about Jeez. it later. Joe Burrow. Wah, wah. Justin Herbert. That's injury. Yeah, dude. Well, well, that's, well, I'm saying injury included. Like this is this yeah. is still a bummer. <laughs> um, Fair. Justin Herbert. I mean, he's trending not in a great direction. Justin Fields. How dare you? How dare you, sir? <laughs> no, nothing needs to be said there. Anyways, Injury. Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson, I mean, Dak Prescott, Tua Tagovailoa, Aaron Rodgers, like, holy smoke. Oh, and Daniel Jones Kirk. and Kirk Cousins. Oh, bro, like, that's literally half of the top 14, yeah. 15 quarterbacks that were drafted this year. Yeah. You're in shambles. And, yeah, no, I. it's been a bad year for quarterbacks. If you took a quarterback early, uh, unless their name was Josh Allen, you're just really unhappy. And Jalen Hurts. Um, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. J Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen seem to be returning on the investment, but that is pretty much it. 
going back uh, to the Jags, just as we kind of wrap up this, this game recap, Travis Etienne found the end zone again. The guy feels like Alvin Kamara reincarnate, just turned back the clock. It's on the ground. It's through the air. He's shifty. He finds a way to keep the feet moving. You're stoked if you have him. Not too much to talk about there. The Christian Kirk versus Calvin Ridley debate, I think, is over. Christian Kirk's the consistent one. Calvin Ridley, in fairness, did have a cut, like an incredible catch called back, like a super long play from C.J. Beathard because of penalty, but eight targets and almost nothing to show for it. Only no, he four was catches. outplayed by Parker Washington and Zay Jones. Yeah. I don't understand how and why they use him. And for dynasty purposes, I don't I don't love his future prospects at all. I mean, he's a free agent this offseason. So he's yeah. not the odds of him being a Jaguar are very, very low. So I mean I mean, that's a guy you could see maybe go to the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I think that's where he could revive his 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 uh career. But other than that, I mean I'm nervous. He's already he's on his rookie contract still, but he's already that's- 29. That's crazy to me. That, that, yeah, know. that's that's such a unique story. But he came in um, old, or he's twenty eight. Sorry, but he'll be twenty nine by the next season. By next season, CJ Beathard obviously didn't have enough time to show us what he could really do. But the drives we did see were mostly encouraging. I would say Trevor Lawrence being out. What does that do to this offense as a whole? Is it a bump for for Travis Etienne, or is this just a net negative for the entire roster? Well, I mean. Two weeks ago, if you would ask me this about Jake Browning, it's down for everyone, right? So at yeah. this point, given how the NFL's kind of played out with quarterbacks, I legitimately have no idea. I, I yeah. don't. And I know that's not great to say as like a fantasy analyst, but like I'm not going to downgrade everyone immediately because you just don't. I think that would be the wrong overreaction in this uh, case. Yeah, I, I would actually agree with you in the sense that, hey, you know, don't panic trade any of them. I mean, deadlines Correct. should be coming up if not if not passed, but – I wouldn't panic trade any of these guys going into playoffs because how much of a downgrade for fantasy purposes is CJ Beathard? Maybe there's a world where game script wise, they're chucking it all over the place now because they can't control the game yeah. from in front because they're just not as efficient. So for fantasy, I'm not not saying it for NFL purposes, but for fantasy it might actually be better. We really it, don't. Yes. Know. And don't get Trevor cute. Lawrence has not been great. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And don't get cute. Like we're heading into playoffs word to the wise. Don't get cute. Start your studs. Like, Honestly, you don't want to lose a championship because you try to get cute and you sit. Mm. What? Well, you're going to sit at no, Travis Etienne. You're going to sit I'm like those sit, guys. No, no. Okay. But I sat studs, Joe Mixon like, this week. Like a okay, damn well, okay. Well, that's you. Okay. Time out. Let's pause. That's just you needing to get something off your chest. Like that's that you just projected on <laughs> no, everyone. I'm, no, 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 no. I, no, no, I thought you not, were talking I, to the likes of like a Garrett Wilson and Evan Ingram no, start, versus. Yes. A, I'm starting you know, Garrett Wilson. Like you're, you're, if you sit at Garrett Wilson. Like you're not going to start a Garrett Wilson. Who are you starting over a Garrett Wilson? Are you starting? You're not starting T Higgins. Uh, that's for sure. Today, you're not this week, I wish I'd have started Par- Parker Washington. I wish. <laughs> you know, like no one's ever doing that. But are no, you starting I, in playoffs? And you need to win. I, I would take a shot on a Noah Brown over a Garrett Wilson in the right situation. If I knew Noah Brown was going to start in the right situation, are you I'm starting? Saying, a, are you starting really Noah Brown? Are you starting Jaden Reed over like a uh, Garrett Wilson? If I know Christian with, Watson's with out, with Christian yeah. Watson out, yeah, I might. Okay. Yeah, it, now if Zach Wilson's back at QB, we could we could get into that. But an incredible game on Monday night. Very unfortunate news. It you hate to see another young star in the NFL go down. Not good for the business. But we'll just see what these backups can keep producing. We're going to take a quick break and come back with a little all aboard and overboard. You know, I've taken a lot of crap from you dylan in regards to justin fields my love blah 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 but the other quarterback who i've tied my fate and my reputation to is none other than the starting future hall of fame quarterback for the green bay packers mr jordan love i told you at the beginning of the season he could have a mediocre season and the comparisons to aaron Rodgers and brett Favre would be there they have been there in spades and oh by the way turns out he's actually also really good at the football okay because guess what (laughs) he's coming off back-to-back wins over the detroit lions one of the nfc's best and the kansas city chiefs the defending champs no slouches whatsoever so dylan all aboard overboard are you ready to admit that my bold season prediction was correct that jordan love has in fact arrived and should be seen as a top 10 dynasty qb all right, all right, all right. Talk your talk. Listen, you can have the victory lap on this one. I'll, I'll, I'll hear it. I'll listen to it because yes, I am all aboard. I'm all aboard the Jordan Thanks. Love train. That is I, the show. We're I, good. I, that I is. I I, <laughs> no, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, that was a, that was a whiff by me. I just, 
there was some inconsistencies early on. We saw it, right? We saw that first three games. I think it was where he had a solid three game stretch, and then we yep. kind of saw him fall off, get shaky. But yeah, week I mean, five to eight was not fun. It was not fun. No, it wasn't, and it was not looking great. But I mean, something's clicking. They went in. They went. Uh, well, they are at home, but they went and played Kansas City. And I mean, that's a good defense. That's a Spagnola defense yeah. that is good, right? Um, we saw what they did to Miami, one of the top scoring offenses in the league. And for Jaden or for uh, Jordan Love to go out there and dismantle it. Oh, really. you're, you're he talking about picked... the Kansas City, the Kansas City defense, what they did to Miami. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. I'm like, saying the Spagnola like, defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the Spagnola like, defense did, did to Miami. Miami. No, and that's, then, that's actually a great point. That is a great point. Yeah, and that's like one of the top really offenses great. in the league. No, um, for sure. And then really for well the Packers defense. to go in. And, I mean, how many times in the if you watch the game did you hear them say last night, man, this offense, one of the youngest offenses in the league. And this it's a, and that's very true. And, like, the spotting should like, have been anticipated. Go ahead. I feel like Dynasty owners loved that. Like, how many times have you gone on to a key <laughs> trade cut or a Dynasty dad? Like, I'm the youngest average age yep. team in the league. Like, that's such a Dynasty nerd. Like, I love that they put that 100%. in. 100%. No, yeah. yeah, no, but, I mean, that's – and that's just it. The fact that they're a young team. You've got Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Malik Heath who showed up, um, a Christian Watson who – Christian oh, Hamstring on. Watson. Can't, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Not good. Musgrave, Kraft, like, and then love. And it's just, it's, it really is like, I, I'm, I'm a believer in love and what they can do in that offense because of how well this team, this core, this young core is progressing. Yeah. Matt LaFleur, I don't think gets enough credit for being a great offensive mind. Um, as long as Aaron Rodgers was there in green Bay, he was going to get more of the shine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think Jordan loved to me, like he just, I don't know, man. They, and I, it kind of, I don't like, ever jumping to an extreme so i'm like oh he's the next brett Favre or aaron Rodgers. No, and, i feel and like that's really detrimental should, to him that shouldn't be fair to him that's is. not fair to him no it, and 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 frankly it, it's unwise to and i actually don't believe that i don't think you can give him that credit yet i'm right. just i was betting on what the nfl media was going to do <laughs> because it's it's right there it's such an easy storyline to pick up but whether or not he produces at that level he that i mean those are two incredible quarterbacks who did it consistently over a long period of time why I'm excited about Jordan Love, it's actually the receiving options around him maturing. I think that was what was holding him back in weeks five through eight. Frankly, I think it's why Rodgers had more of a down year last season. They did not seem to be able to make clutch plays. You didn't know who was your go-to guy. It seems like it's all of them in Green Bay. But I want to jump to the other side. As reliable as Green Bay receivers have seemingly become, Romeo Dubs had a big catch. Christian Watson had a dominant. We Actually, before we do, Christian Watson, last two weeks, it was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. The Christian Watson that we thought could, you know, emerge this year is starting to happen. End of the game, takes an end around and tweaks his hammy. He's already struggled with hamstring injuries. Uh, I don't know what league or what chat I was in, but I was like, this just is Will Fuller all over oh, again. If you remember, oh. do you remember Will Fuller on the Texans yes. with Sean Watson? It was like, he's the best ever. And at the end of the game, he tweaked his ankle. He tweaked his hamstring. He tweaked whatever. And it was always First like finger. one to two games out. Yeah, the it was fingers what been... ruined the career for Phil Fuller. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's brutal. It's brutal. So yeah, it is. Christian and I Watson... think for Christian Watson, it's just it's a bummer, man. Like we we see the potential there, and he, I mean, he balls out. It took him a little bit to even get going with Love because during that that rough stretch is when Watson came back, and I was yep. a little worried. I was like, man, is he throwing off Love? And then they just started clicking. And so yep. I mean, I hope he can stay healthy. And if he can, oh man, like he. He's going to be a weapon. Like he, Dude, he's a stud. He, he's a freak he is, athlete. He's, he's fast. It's just so fast and big. Insane. It's Question great. for you before we move on from love. So it's all aboard overboard top 10. You bought your over, oh, or yeah. you're, you're all oh, aboard. I, I'm, all I'm all aboard top 10, which is audacious because who's getting kicked out. Is it a uh, Dak right Prescott? Now. Is it a Kyler Murray? Is it like Kyler, yes, Kyler Murray. Absolutely. I think so. That was my first man out. It was going to be Kyler Murray. Yeah. Like it's got to be. Yeah. And, and frankly, be. I think you could make an argument against Lawrence right now. I really do. Um, and that's not because once again, this isn't NFL. I'm talking. I'm talking fantasy. And Trevor Lawrence has yet, this injury sucks. Has yet to put together a fantasy relevant season more relevant than the one Jordan Love is currently having. So. Yeah, that, I mean, I don't want to get too much into the weeds. I say there. it out loud, and then I kind of go back. I don't know if I've, I'm all aboard on the top ten. Only because here's here's my here's my caveat that I'll add. He doesn't have a contract. He does not have a long term yeah, contract. Not now, yet, if that gets worked on the off season, first, and I think he's yeah. auditioning well, 
I, yeah. I can I will say tentatively all aboard, but if he for yeah, I mean that's kind of a well, you know, if he doesn't get a long term contract, that's gonna yeah, be confusing. That's gonna be that's, very yeah. yeah. No, I I wanted to talk about the other side of that game because we've talked about quarterbacks a lot, but Patrick Mahomes, obviously Patrick Mahomes still are 101, my 101 of dynasty startup QBs. Like mm-hmm. he's feels like the safest thing in the world. Having a down year, he's only the quarterback 10. Can we get that man a receiver? Yeah. Like it is so infuriating to talk in fantasy about like offensive situations. Like we've never seen Patrick Mahomes be in an offense that's having to figure it out. It always seemed seamless. It always seemed like the Chiefs were the, the next step ahead. And watching that game in prime time, I was like, holy cow, the, the, the Packers have a more robust wide receiver room. And part of that obviously is Travis Kelsey. So my next all aboard overboard, I want to ask you, Dylan, is is it t- – now, Travis Kelsey had a fine game, a fine game for fantasy, um, and he's still the tight end one on the season, but he clearly isn't enough to keep the entire Chiefs offense going like he was last year. Is it time to retire Travis Kelsey and Kyle Pitts in Dynasty? Oh. I'm going to throw – let's focus on Kelsey and the Chiefs for a second. Yeah. I'm throw – you know, we're going kind of hot and cool. We're going the aged superstar who's still producing, but it doesn't look like he can do it for much longer – and the eternal youth and hope of the the unicorn, athlete. yeah, no, yeah, ooh, different type uh, of unicorn. Man, I, I mean, I think for a couple of weeks now, I may have said it passively. I haven't been like you know super obnoxious about it, but Travis Kelsey's on the decline. I, I, I know that's blasphemous to say in the fantasy world, but it's I don't true. Think it is. I don't think it I is. I mean, I maybe think I think people are starting to come. It's become people are coming more hip to it, but. I think what you're starting to see is Travis Kelsey just doesn't have the same effect that he has. So I, I just, to me, it's time to move on. There, there are up and coming tight ends that I think it's time to move on. And if you can flip Kelsey four plus still, which is probably not likely depending no, on who so. you're going for. Um, but maybe there is someone still holding out. If you can flip Travis Kelsey plus to get one of those Laportas, Kincaids, whoever it is, I don't, I don't I think, try and I don't think do you that. can get that. You can't get that straight up right now. Maybe, no, no, probably shot. not for Laporta for Kincaid. Maybe. Okay. I think so Kincaid... on, keep, on keep trade cut, Kelsey is the tight end five. Uh, the tight Good end Lord. one is Laporta. Hawkinson is two. Number three is Kincaid. Number four is Andrews. And then it's Travis Kelsey. Kyle Pitts wow. somehow is still tight end seven. That's insane. Um, I, well, so yeah. going back to Travis Kelsey, I, I mean, the fact that Travis Kelsey isn't getting worked in the offense is just destroying everyone else around him because that whole offense is built on if you can't stop Kelsey, we'll just go Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey. Oh, boom, over the top. Rasheed well, Rice it, or MBS who has no hands. But that's the point is the over the top. Travis Kelsey dominates the middle of the field because mm-hmm. he, he's, he finds the, the hole in the zone. If you're not worried about getting beat over the top because MBS doesn't have the hands, that Chiefs offense, essentially, it, I don't want to say it's defunct. Isaiah Pacheco has been doing it on the ground, but it's been hurting the fantasy production of that entire offense. Yeah, like Kelsey can't do Kelsey things. He's just sort of a PPR. Like, and you know, we should have seen this coming. The writing was on the wall with the injuries and like, and and not to say like I don't think maybe injuries are still playing a part in it. I don't know. We don't know. A lot of guys play banged up, but to me, it's it's time to move on from Kelsey. If you have Kelsey, yeah. even. As a contender, if you can get someone before the trade deadline, well, that's a good question, though. I, I don't know. He's still you know the tight end one on the year. I know. He's, he's still, still going to have his games, and you know he's going to have yeah. his games. I think you ride it out for the rest of the season, so I'll say that. But, I mean, that's taking a gamble. If you're a competitor to do that, if you're not and you're one of those wishy-washy teams because of Kelsey, I'm trying to move Kelsey for – McBride plus. I didn't hear McBride in front of him. McBride so is tight end six, and, get... and he's rising. He's rising. <laughs> See, that's but that's where I draw the line. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Now the plus is interesting. I think we make this mistake, and I've I've certainly done it. The age, you know. Oh, it's it's all falling apart. The guy still had an incredible week compared to everyone else. It's just that we expect Travis Kelsey to score two touchdowns a game. What he did last season was a historic pace. I believe he had. He had 10 catches this last week. Let me double check right now. Yeah, I didn't have that pulled up. Um, no. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Well, yeah, he had. No, he had four for five. For, or sorry. Uh, or, no, no, he had he had four for 81. Four, four for sorry. 81. Yeah, sorry. That's what I meant. He four had for four 81, for 81. Four for he had 10 fantasy points. So he still had an okay game, which he was four great. Four for 81, five. I mean, you're not used to seeing Travis Kelsey getting five targets. No, I'm I'm with you, man. That like, was a that's, weird game. That's like I, in. 
I mean, I I don't know. It's just I mean, Rasheed Rice getting nine targets, MVS no hands getting five targets. Like, yeah. All I'm I don't saying, know. all I'm trying to say is pump the brakes on this. If it's Laporta, obviously get that deal done. If it's Hawkinson, even now, uh, Matthew no, Barry, no, you, yes, you're done. trading him. Uh, if you can get yeah, him straight up, yes, get Mark get Andrews, Hawkinson. obviously, um, in my opinion, and then uh, Kincaid. I don't know that I would do it. Uh, I think that's a little bit too much recency bias. McBride, I don't know if I would do it. It depends on the plus. It depends on. I would the do plus. Kincaid straight up. I would do I Kincaid straight do up. Kincaid. I would I do wouldn't. Kincaid straight up. I would want McBride plus. You could probably get Kincaid. I think plus. That's- but I would do I would do Kincaid straight up, honestly. I, I would, and I know that sounds crazy. And Travis Kelsey's Travis Kelsey, but you know we don't want to be caught holding the bag with Travis Kelsey. He's thirty three years old. But if if the just, bag is another two years of of a top three tight end, is, is does he play for another two years? Like I the, no no, the, no the, I, I don't the, think the he production does, frankly, is just going like this. Like that's that's the thing is like the production trailing off is a concern. It is a major concern. He's not yeah, even being force fed and like just not making anything happen. He's just not say, even getting fed. All I would say is this is if you climb up to Mount Everest, the decline is going to be steep. There's a lot to decline from, but e- you know, even two thirds of the way down, you're still higher than most mountains. And I think that's the problem with Travis Kelsey was what I'm saying is you and I your know, broke that- back analogies. <laughs> what? How is that broke back? Where, where in the in the, the Everest Freudian, mountain? <laughs> what? Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world. It's in the Himalayas. Oh, what in the world is that? Oh my! God. I'm simply saying that the descent from three, th- you know, he, Travis Kelsey is on the Mount Rushmore of fantasy tight ends. Might be the tight end fantasy one of all time. Sure, maybe him. And but Rose, so you're telling me you're okay with being caught holding the bag with Travis Kelsey? With certain players. I'm just saying it depends on the compensation in return because we're just hoping Trey McBride is a third of what Kelsey's career was. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that his, you know, you don't get his whole career. It's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is simply Kelsey could probably still be a top three tight end for the next two years. He's clearly on the decline. If it's Laporta, absolutely. If it's McBride, it just depends on the plus. I, and it also depends on, on championship window, I don't want to overreact to the offense struggling because what if they do get a wide receiver? He re-ups and t- Travis Kelsey is right back to being the tight end one again next year. Yeah, that's. I just that's think if I had the chance of getting well. younger and getting production, I think I would take it. But I, I get what you're saying. I, I, the, I'm, the biggest thing I'm for me that is mostly on board with you. I'm mostly on board with you. I'm just trying to provide a voice of reason. I, <laughs> listen, I traded Travis Kelsey away in Yacht Club last year for a George Pickens plus. Right? Yeah. Obviously, I'm in love with George Pickens, but like I, I did this. And yet, Travis Kelsey is still way more solidified as a fantasy asset you can trust than George Pickens. I'm still waiting on George Pickens to become who I want. So, it <laughs> still on waiting. I'll be wa- <laughs> I'll be waiting. He's got for a Kenny Pickett problem. <laughs> My B, he's 22 years old. He doesn't have a Pickett time. problem now. He's got a Trubisky problem. Well, he's got a lack of a Pickett <laughs> problem. But I digress. Moving over to Kyle Pitts really quickly. We've talked a lot about Travis Kelsey. Kyle Pitts somehow is still. I, I just. I wasn't planning to talk about him on the show, but he like Michael Pruitt or M- McCall Pruitt. I, I should say McCall, another tight end, yeah. another tight end in Atlanta. Who's probably in a great NFL player and deserves a lot of credit. He scored a touchdown. <laughs> Kyle Pitts did not. He still somehow keep trade cut tight end seven. There are oh. 10 tight ends. I would rather have than Kyle Pitts right now. I think that is someone you have to admit. I was just wrong. If you, if you I mean, just throw him in your taxi squad and you want to wait, good for you. And don't start him. It's Don't the start opposite. him for another two years. It's the opposite of Travis Kelsey. You're just holding on to Kyle Pitts. Like at this point, why would you sell him? Like you're not getting anything for him. Like unless you can fool someone into trick them into talking about his youth and how he's a unicorn and how it's just an Arthur Smith problem. Pull up his combine Arthur, video. Like you could totally sell him like jazzing all that up. But the bottom line is just hold on to him. Like hold on to him because the least – the, it can't get any worse than what you're getting from him right now. So I think you could probably pick up someone off the waivers and start over him and be better off. Maybe one of those other tight ends and in Atlanta, but I think there's still a market for him because even as early as last year, right after the expansion draft got done, I called the Kyle Pitts owner in yacht club. And I was like, it was just a down year. Maybe he's low. And the, the Pitts owner was like, man, it would take at least two first. And I was like, I've got, I might do a first. Like even last year, I was like, I'll do a first. I get Kyle Pitts. Man, if I just waited one season, like if I had done that trade and then this year had happened and Laporta breaks out and Kincaid breaks out, Jake Ferguson shows up, I, I you know, I feel like a fool. So, um, yeah, I mean, is relevant, so I don't even know what I would move off of Pitts for. Like, 
I just I, I don't first. even know how to value him. Any first. Well, if, yeah, if I, I guess that's true. If you can get him. any first. If you yeah. get any first, but I mean, like we mentioned Travis Kelsey and we're saying like, Oh, McBride plus and Kincaid plus like, I wouldn't even consider. Oh, I can't say that. Would you consider Pitts and a first for Kelsey? Frick. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely, it depends. That's team. It if sounds I'm, if like I'm, a yes. Yeah. But... At first you're like, yeah. And then you're like, wait, I'm it might be a <laughs> exactly. single first. But a single first for Kelsey. If, if you're not a contender, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you you know what Travis Kelsey is. If he makes die contender. on your roster. Yeah. yeah. If you're not a contender and you need to get younger, I'll take the dice roll on Kyle Pitts that it works out somewhere. Arthur Smith somehow gets fired, which I don't think happens. <laughs> I don't think, I think that's that they win that. It's terrible. Um, but yeah, it's those are difficult players to value, and I think specifically the Chiefs they're difficult for fantasy this season. They they're they're a stalwart organization that usually if you just get any piece. Of that offense, you're still. Rasheed Rice has had relevant games. Jose Pacheco's having a good year. Mahomes is still fantasy relevant, just not nearly as relevant as he normally is. But for dynasty purposes, it, the, you you are at that inflection point with whether or not you want to. Wow. Uh, nice little keep plug there, Travis Kelsey. I mean, uh, another dude. The biggest the biggest whiffs from the fantasy community have been Kyle Pitts and Trey Lance. As of, recent, the, I think as, of recent, as of recent, as of recent, yeah, I'm not saying like in the et- eternity, but like that, those are two guys that just like, oh, that's just Zach bad. Wilson. It, bad. You know, maybe J- Jonathan Mingo. No one was way. really high on Zach Wilson though, fantasy wise. It was just because no, that's he was actually drafted true. high. That's actually true. Uh, another player I want to know whether or not it's time to hang it up. It's the end of the season for fantasy purposes. You're either in playoffs or out at this point, pretty much. There's still some play in games people need to have, but Austin Eckler used to be the guy that around this time of year was carrying you to victory and glory. His last three games, supposedly fully healthy, not on the injury report in any major way, six points, 6.9 points, this is all half PPR, and 3.7. He is currently the RB19 on keep trade cut and falling fast. Dylan, have you missed your chance to sell Austin Eckler? And is it time to retire him for fantasy purposes? Or is this just a bad stretch and there's some sneaky value to still be had? We are such Debbie Downers on this episode. Like it's literally like doomsday. We're literally just preaching doomsday right now. <laughs> Get rid of all these players. They're whole. They're this. Um, but we're gonna keep we, it rolling because yes, you need to. Get... We're rebuilding franchises. You know what I mean? <laughs> we it's are. Kind of the, yeah. This is what it's we where do. We're at in life. You know. Like, oh, you think you guys are good because you have these old players? Well, they're about to be bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's literally. They would right. score more than my entire <laughs> roster combined. However, I have picks. But I will have um, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's time to. I'm I'm worried about Eckler, and it's 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 may not even be an Eckler problem. It really may not be the Chargers off the Chargers organization, but specifically the Chargers offense is just wow. It, it's just not good. I mean, even this past game, and I know it was the Patriots, and you know the Patriots have generally a, a pretty good defense. Um, but Keenan Allen was a non-factor, and if Keenan Allen's not getting going, and the passing game isn't getting going. What do you expect Eckler to do? Eckler couldn't even catch passes out of the backfield. I mean, the dude had 14 carries for 18, 18 yards, uh, two receptions but for nine is, yards. This is like, a 28 year old running back who's clearly, I mean, he had such an incredible run the last two years. You know, his best years are behind you, unless he, like, because those last couple of years were just so great. So the, the question is simple. I mean, are you, you, you know, you're past the best point of his production, Dylan. Is it time to retire him? Is it time to move him off for almost any? Any value you can gain. Absolutely. If you can get a first for him, absolutely. Like if you can get a first for Austin Eckler, I don't know that you can, even if it's a late first. If you can get I may even get rid of Eckler for two seconds. Like uh, it's twenty four seconds. Point. What about like you're talking about like a twenty five first as well, even a twenty six for people who trade twenty twenty six already? Twenty six actually, yes. I would I I know that's super far in advance, but if you're trading them, yes, I would I would go and get twenty six. What are you shaking your head at? I would go and my get twenty six. It's it's my favorite it's when I knew the yacht club was gonna be a thing. One of our owners, we were about to have our first ever rookie draft, and he was like, <laughs> I, I wanna take he's like he's like, listen. I'm taking Arch Manning. This is right <laughs> after Arch Manning first. This is, this like is not a Debbie league. No, it's like 2019. Like Arch Manning just, it's like, oh, there's a Manning playing high school football. And he's like, I'm going to take him with my pick. I've got the, I've got the pick. And I'm like, you, you can't do that. Like we're not, <laughs> that's not the type of league that we're doing. It's like, yes, we can. Like, let me do this. And so at that time I was like, when is Arch Manning even going to be draft eligible? And I was like, 
I was, I was like, it's 2026. So 2026 <laughs> is a draft class. I've always like, hey, 2026 though, it's going to be the Arch Manning class. The like Arch Manning class, yeah. Had it, had it penciled out for years now. No, I, I yes, I going back to Austin Eckler, I would trade him for two first, any any two first for, or sorry, let's say two single first at first. You're yeah, not I mean, I was trading. You're not getting. Two, you're not getting two, two first. You're yeah. not getting two first. Any any first really, and then two seconds. Any two seconds, honestly. Right. I, I just, I'm I, worried. I'm worried about Austin Eckler. I really am. I'm gonna shock you with this one. I think he's a sneaky buy low candidate. I, I think, of course, you do. No, I just hear me out. Hear me out. We have to remember how Austin Eckler's career started. This bell cow, hyper-utilized, incredibly efficient touchdown scoring running back, that didn't happen for him right away. He didn't come into the league that way. He was unknown. I believe he was undrafted or he was a late-round draft. I don't know exactly his, his career history, but I do know he came in behind Melvin Gordon. And he, he was, was the third down. Yeah, okay. So third undrafted, third down, change of pace running back. Um, who just kept eating into Melvin Gordon shares and looked better and better than Melvin Gordon at all times. We were chatting a little bit before the show and a player I think of constantly, not constantly, but like I remember <laughs> Dion Lewis. More yeah. than George Pickens? <laughs> yeah, no, Dion Lewis was the original George Pickens for me. Running back for the Patriots, who then went to be a pass catcher um, for the, the Titans and had relevance there. I think that Eckler can find relevance as a third down back on a contending team. Uh, very similar to how Leonard Fournette did when he went to Tampa Bay, going away from Jacksonville. Eckler takes incredible care of his body. He's just a really intelligent guy. I, I actually think he might be a buy located. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. Are his best years behind him? Yes. Can you trust him as your RB1 going forward for years to come? I think no. If that's the question, my answer is no. But am I ready to retire him? No, I actually, if I was a contending team right now, I would try to go see if I can get him for a single second and roll into next year if people are panicking. So I'm, yeah, I think I that there's... I don't disagree with going... If you're a contending... If you can get him for a second, I mean, yeah. you might as well... I don't know about the rest of the season. Upside. The Chargers the Chargers are a nightmare, but imagine if he went to the Chiefs you may have and just, was the Jarek McKinnon role. You know, you just you may have just convinced me because I'm, I'm looking at his schedule and in the last three games were Green Bay, Baltimore, yep. New England. Green Bay, I mean, I don't really Good know what defenses. happened there. Green Bay is an all right defense. Pacheco just tore them up. But Baltimore, Terrible. New England, I mean, those are two very, very good defenses. And then he has Denver, Vegas, Buffalo, um, and then Denver again in the playoffs. Denver's a good defense. Yeah. So now, I don't yeah, know. Now Miami, Miami spanked them into being competent. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I, if you can go get him for a single second, I guess – you're right, but I mean, I I'm just nervous about him. I'm if he's your RB one, no, I would be I would be yeah. cheeks clenched, cheeks. And clenched. that's and if you're that owner, you're feeling it like holy crap, it's it's happening. He's dying yes. on my roster. Get him off, get him off, get him off. All I'm saying is, hey, another player, very similar to Travis Kelsey, where it's like if he retires on your roster, is that really the end of the world? Because who knows how long you know, the final swan song is? It could be two more seasons. You just don't know. You might as well squeeze it for all it's worth. If I just the price I'm, isn't right. The problem if the is, price isn't right. The problem is, is I just it's not an Eckler problem. It really is a Chargers right. problem. I just don't right. I don't know. Like I don't if if they can't get the passing game going, then I just don't know that Eckler will be effective. But I mean, if you can get him for a second, you know what he can be. So sure, but if if not, and if he's your RB one, I'm I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm nervous if I were you. Yeah. Well, someone, uh, well, a player, I should say, a lot of owners, I don't know if they were nervous about, were very disappointed in until this last week. I think we already made mention of it in the last show, but DK Metcalf nervous. absolutely woke up against the Dallas defense. Who's I'm just saying, saying he. Who's saying there? I, I wasn't nervous. All I'm saying was, I'm sure there were owners who were disappointed for how the season was going for DK Metcalf because he was having a very disappointing fantasy season until he erupted against the Cowboys, three touchdowns, still only 25 years old. I know one of our assistant producers is stoked that we're finally talking about a Seahawk and giving them some respect. <laughs> DK Metcalf, has he reestablished himself as a dynasty wide receiver one? We're talking top 12 and keep trade cut. Are there 12 guys you'd prefer over him, Dylan? Um, no, there's probably eight to 10 that I would prefer over him. But DK Metcalf, I've always been a big fan of DK Metcalf. I always have. I, I thought he's always been an alpha one. Regardless of the quarterback, Geno Smith hasn't been playing great. DK Metcalf was injured. I'm not worried about how he started the season. He's healthy. He proved it. He just tore up one of the best D defenses, best DBs in the league this past week. 
and and then that's our Cowboys, so you know that's painful. But I mean, we won bro, the game. It was, it was we, great. we did win we the won. game. But I mean, DK is just you just can't bet against a freak athlete like that that can do what he does. Yeah, and to say that you would take ten uh, or twelve other guys over him, I would love to hear those twelve because. I don't know that they've even proven to have the production that DK Metcalf has. Last year was a down year, and he was still a top 15 option for want, Dynasty. Do you want Garrett Dynasty. Wilson or DK Metcalf in Dynasty more right now? Right now? Yeah. <laughs> I, the talent. I love Garrett Wilson's talent. Yeah. I think I am I think I would go DK, though. I think it's I would safer. go DK. It's he's, safe. He's the safer. ceiling, just, the ceiling, the unknown of Gary Wilson with I a know. healthy it's, it's alluring, like, and that's the first time I've ever yeah. thought about those two players. But I think yeah. I would take Chris Olave. Again, it's the it's the ceiling that you're allured by with Chris Olave. I think I would take and the DK. youth. I would yeah, take DK. The, so the only receivers that I'm taking over him, right? We've got Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, obviously AJ Brown, C.D. Lamb. No, AJ Brown, C.D. Lamb, Amar, uh, Amar Ross, St. Brown. Yeah. Um. I mean. Tyreek Hill still. Yeah, Tyreek Hill still. Um, Devontae Smith probably. No, well, I'd take Garrett Wilson over him, over Devontae Smith still. So uh, Chris Olave. Devontae Smith is tough... such a tricky one. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, He's in there. But, I mean, bottom line, I'm all aboard. I know aboard. we're missing someone obvious. We are. Right we are it's probably killing. missing someone obvious. But, I mean, all aboard. I, I mean, I'm taking him. as. Are you taking him as a, as a top 12 dynasty wide receiver? Yeah, I think I am. And I, I'm surprised that, that you were still in on it because I know you love some of those more youthful guys. But um, I mean, he's 25. He's not old. No, but he feels old because he's been in the NFL for so long. This is kind of the Amari Cooper effect. You know, Amari Cooper got into the league so young. It's like Amari Cooper's on his 10th season in the NFL. It's like he's 29 yeah. years old. It's like, what what happened? We, we've been um, spoiled. And DK hit early, but we've been spoiled where like wide receivers typically, they don't hit. And we've talked about this. They don't really take off usually until year two or three. So We've right. been spoiled and he's been good. So I'm just not worried about him declining at 25. No, it's not about that. It's more about the ceiling. It's more about, do you get bored with that consistent wide receiver two ish production? Cause you got to remember Tyler Lockett outscored him last year. So yeah. it isn't necessary. It, DK isn't usually a league winner on the season total, but he can, he can have incredible games that win you weeks and he can have seasons that are excellent. He, he finished his wide receiver five once before, at least in our league scoring format. Um, but you know what it is that convinced me? Mike Evans, and I know this is seems unrelated, just had his 10th year of 1,000 yards um, at 30 years old. And it felt like Mike Evans has been so consistent and so good for fantasy. But for like since his age 27 season, you kind of got sick of seeing 1,000 yards and five to seven touchdowns, the occasional 10 touchdown season, and you kept chasing the new hotness. I know I've done it in drafts. Mm -hmm. I feel like DK is going to be that guy as well. I feel like DK, even though I've seen him do it consistently, be a 1,000-yard receiver – you know, a chance at double digit touchdowns every year. It's like, okay, do I take DK or do I take this new rookie? Do I take the Puka Nakua? And frankly, I, you know, Puka Nakua is a line. Like, I think Puka Nakua is like, that's a really sexy name, but I do I feel bring, safer? I was going to bring that name safer? up because he's ranked higher than him on Keep Trade Cut. Yeah, Tank Dell is, I think, as well. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've got Tank Dell, Jordan Addison. Yeah, Puka he's, Nakua, he's all over him. He's a. Uh, Wide receiver 15 on Keep Drake. I think Devontae yep. Smith is also ranked ahead of him. You know, JSN. JSN, who's on his team, is is ranked ahead of him. So oh, I didn't even see that till just now. That is – oh, no, he's right behind bonkers. him. He's right behind him. Oh, he, he moved behind he, him. He's okay, wide that changed, 16. Yeah, he's wide yeah, behind that him. Yeah, that changed since like two days ago. So it's just crazy, the volatility. But I, I think it's one of those things where you settle in and you get towards the end of the fantasy season, which this is. We're not there, but we're coming in on the final stretch, right? And you start to appreciate the consistent guys. Off season and especially the preseason, it's all about the new hotness. It's all about who's breaking out. And guys like DK Metcalf get forgotten about. They get slept on. And they I'm can gonna get a key to your fantasy championship. Go ahead. I'm going to get slammed for this. But I literally am taking DK Pause. Metcalf. Pause. Before you said this, you say this constantly and they are the most un- like spicy it's like no everyone thinks that's like really it's like yeah so this better be freaking good dude it's like i'm gonna get slammed for this but patrick mahomes the dynasty qb1 it's <laughs> like yeah we all think that dylan no one no one what? disagrees with you where did this come I'm just, from i'm getting roasted this, this, this needs to be good roasted. this needs, this needs no, i'm to taking be dk metcalf over jalen waddle that's not once again that's not controversial Bro, yes it is yes it i don't is. think you know how many people are taking jalen i i'm, a lot. A I'm lot. looking at this list and dk metcalf for me compared to keep Drake is probably my wide receiver 
nine, eight or nine. And that's yeah. over Puka Nakua. That's over Jalen Waddle. That's over Chris Olave. It's under Garrett. He's at the Garrett Wilson line. And yeah. then right behind him, I have Brandon Ayuk. I would probably take Brandon Ayuk. I would take. Or I would, I would, sorry, I would take DK over Brandon. I would Ayuk. take. Brandon Ayuk I would take DK right over Ayuk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a. It's an interesting tier, but we just want to give DK his flowers because he represents a tier of player that often gets overlooked. And so, um, listen, that it's been an action-packed show. This is going to do it for the Dynasty Exchange. Uh, hopefully, the next primetime game we have, I, we're hoping and praying, but we've been unsuccessful <laughs> with this all season. There's most likely going to be a crazy injury, and we are just. We're very seasoned at reacting to it for you. Go so, get your quarterback handcuff. Yeah, go pick up an Before unknown playoffs. player you've never heard of for any star player you have. Go get the third string of whatever starter you're relying on. Go spend 175 fab on Brett Ripien. Hey, that's hurtful. <laughs> Imagine if he had been Jake Browning. I'd look like a genius. With that, uh, we are going to let you guys go. This has been the Dynasty Exchange. Thanks you again for tuning in. Dynasty the king, uh, king, uh.